Welcome back to the is a pretty much pound per pound the most powerhouse individual character in the game you should definitely have him in your roster he should be a top priority over nearly everybody there's excluding galactic legends i don't think any single individual character is more powerful than darth malik they are characters who are fantastic in a team and they are they can take down malik but a lot of times it involves an entire freaking team or they will still lose but individually by himself I don't think there's any other character that can be more destructive and controlling than Darth Malak. So, when it comes to his event, let's do this right. Let's get you Darth Malak. All right. So, on the light side, seven star, 17.5 thousand powers required. The team composition we're going to be playing around with here is Jedi Knight Revan with Basti, Joe Lee, Mission, and Zalbar. Now, when it comes to um, gears here, guys, I just want to let you know real quick. These guys are in pretty much the exact same condition as when I originally unlocked Darth Malak. The only exception being Jedi Knight Revan, who is, I believe, gear 12 plus 4 or something like that, who is now Relic 1. But that's, yeah, it's not much of a change. Otherwise, Basti is gear 12 plus 2, Mission is gear 12 plus 2, Zalba is gear 12 plus 3, and Jolie is gear 12 plus 4. Okay, the Zetas required for this event are, are quite minimal, but bear in mind that we are talking about for this event, all right? Direct focus doesn't do a whole lot in this actual event. You're adding a buff immunity for two turns, which can't be copied, dispelled, or resisted. I, I mean, it's not the worst thing to have, but we're not going to use this on Malak, right? We're going to use this ability on other characters for the most part to avoid hitting Malak. So we don't really need that buff immunity. And he can't stun him, so it's, eh, you know, not super needed. Um, general, on the leadership, this one actually is pretty dang awesome. This would be one that says is... is not necessarily required, but makes a bigger influence. The reason being is when a Jedi ally attacks at a turn, they recover 20% protection, but more importantly, they're dealing 35% more damage. And we're gonna mod our Revan for offense. He is basically our damage dealer, and he turns into a monster, actually. Um, so that extra 35% damage is pretty dang awesome. You're not going to notice anything on the other half of his leadership here because you can't reduce uh, Malik's max health because he doesn't have bonus protection. And Tenacity up at the start of the event doesn't really do anything for you. Um, so the leadership is, eh, it's okay. It's okay, but not terrible. Um, and then Hero. Hero is also quite good. Um, Jedi Knight Revan is immune to stun and ability block. That's pretty sweet. But then the, also the other light side characters are gaining half of these bonuses. That's Tenacity, Health Steal, Max Health, Max Protection, Crit Avoidance, Defense, and Crit Damage. So that's nice to share those stats around the board. So if anything, you're looking at General and Hero don't need direct focus for Revan. Basti, you don't need hers because hers is a leadership, so that's irrelevant. Missions is nice to have because she's going to assist whenever Zalbar uses a turn. Just adds to a little bit of extra damage. So this one isn't uh, bad to have. Not absolutely necessary, but it's a good one to have. Zalbar's is honestly pretty irrelevant. Um, at the start of each of his turns, Zalbar and Mission recover 10% protection for each dot on the enemy team. You're not going to be inflicting that many dots. Um, the droids are probably going to die before Zalbar is taking a turn anyways. Um... And you're not going to be inflicting dots on, on Malak, or at least you don't want to. Um, so you won't notice it a ton, but it'll be there. Joe Lee, um, that looks pretty bad. Honestly, it's not absolutely necessary either. Nobody should be dying on your team. Um, this only revives Jedi, and Revan and Basti definitely shouldn't be dying. If anybody, Zalbar probably will. Um, so this is another Zeta. Yeah, keep it in your back pocket just in case, but it's not... People shouldn't be dying. But... Of any, this would be like the next most important one probably for you to have, just in case you keep running into your characters dying. So, mods. When it comes to Jedi Knight Revan, he's actually gonna be pretty much your damage dealer here. Um, so give him an offense set with a potency set. Potency because you might get a little bit of turn meter reduction at, at one crucial pivotal point. 
um, with the direct focus. Um, if you don't have like an offense set that can get these speed secondaries, check your crit damage one. Crit damage also works. I just personally prefer offense, um, but crit damage is okay as well. Um, regardless, you're looking for an offense primary on the triangle and cross and then a speed arrow. So if that's with offense or if that's with crit damage, play around with it. Just try and give him some decent amount of offense. Mine's sitting at 4,100. Um, that's going to allow him to, to put up some pretty good numbers, honestly, against your Malik. Bastila. She is going to be modded for speed and potency. The reason you want to give her some potency is here for subvert defenses. Um, this inflicts buff immunity, and this at some points is going to be useful for you against uh, Malik. Otherwise, speed just to make her go. Um, you don't need anything special when it comes to like offense or anything else, really. Just give her a speed arrow. I have this crit damage one on there purely because of the speed secondary. Potency to better my odds of hitting that buff immunity. Um, but otherwise, just get to yourself some speed secondaries. I'm sitting at 271 speed with 54% potency. Mission. Oh. Hi. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. Hang on, we got a stable break. I wish you guys could have seen that. That was so cute. She didn't like jump up on my desk. She just stood right by my leg and she just put one paw up on my leg. That was so cute. Okay, that's enough. Mission. You're gonna mod mission for offense as well, primarily because of her unique here where she gains plus 50% offense. And then she also gains an additional 10% offense whenever Zalbar takes damage. Um, so she actually ends up pretty, pretty beefy. She actually ends up hitting pretty hard. Um, so that's why she benefits more from offense versus crit damage. Um, but since I have the Zade on her and she's going to be assisting, I actually went all out on offense, even on the arrow, um, but triangle and cross. Um, and we're hoping that she can uh, assist and just deal some good amount of damage for us. So 4,400 offense there. Higher, the better. You don't need her for potency. Um, she already has a flat out 80% potency. I really don't want her to have potency because she's going to be inflicting dots and dots on Malak and cause a taunt. And we don't want that. So Jolie. Jolie, very easy. He is here to heal your teams. Um, most of his stuff is based off his max health. So give him maximum health, um, even on the arrow. Three health sets. Um, get some speed secondaries if you can, but really not that important. Um, he is there primarily to heal your characters and call assists. So just bear that in mind. Last but not least, Zalbar. Now, Zalbar is modded a little bit differently, you guys, than anyone is used to Zalbar being modded. Um, the reason being here is this ability, Power Blast. On a critical hit, you're inflicting Armor Shred for the rest of the battle. Armor Shred is negative 25% offense, or sorry, defense. Minus 25% defense. So you're trying to stack these up as much as you can. And that's based off of a critical hit, not potency or anything. So you're modding him for speed and crit chance, hoping to land those Armor Shreds. Uh, so I even have a crit chance triangle, and then otherwise just survivability and his speed uh, and crit chance set. Get the speed secondaries that you can. Some crit chance secondaries if you can. Mine's at 236 speed and 56% uh, crit chance. I'd like that to be a lot higher, but it is what it is. All right, so we're here in the actual event. Now, here's what's going to happen, you guys. There's a couple of things that you need to bear in mind as we're doing this event. First off, Menacing Foe. Darth Malak is immune to ability block, death mark, fear, shock, stagger, stun, and any effect that produces these results. So all of that, psh, just throw it out the window. You don't need it. Most importantly, Malak gains one stack of dark rage on each of his turns. When he gets to 30, he becomes enraged, and he's going to kill everybody. So you need to control the dark rage, and you control the dark rage by killing these side droids. That removes three stacks, and the stasis field, which also removes three stacks. So we need to keep him under control through killing those side droids now when it comes to those stasis fields this is another very important thing when malik drops below 50 percent health he instantly destroys the stasis field with the lowest health bear that in mind recovers 100 percent of his max health gains a stack of dark infusion until the end of the battle which can't be dispelled or prevented dark infusion is simply plus 35 percent offense it's it's not the craziest thing all right now when he kills one of these stasis fields you guys it gives you a certain buff so like this one gives him speed up offense up and crit damage up until the end of the encounter so we want to control which ones he is taking the best one for him to take is actually this one the dark infusion again dark infusion that's just giving him a stack of dark infusion which is plus 35 percent offense that's i mean he eh, 
by preference, you don't want him to take any, but he might. Um, so what you're going to end up doing um, is attacking this one just so it has the lowest health compared to the other ones. So that if you happen to get him underneath 50% health, yeah, at least he takes the Dark Infusion one. The worst one for him to take is this Critical Hit Immunity one. That's going to make it so hard for you to kill him. Nearly impossible. And Zalbar won't be able to get those armor shreds. So that's the worst one. You definitely don't want him to take that one. Tenacity Up actually can kind of benefit you because it's going to keep um, Mission from hitting dots. Which means she's not going to get hit with fear. Which means she's basically a part of the fight. So the Tenacity Up one can actually kind of benefit you. Um, and then this crit damage one sucks because he gains speed up, which means he's going to take even more turns, get more sacks at dark rage quicker. And then offense up, which is 50% offense, and then crit damage up. So this one is like second worst for him to take. So what we're going to do is we're going to call pretty much any opportunity that you can. You're actually going to be calling Revan to assist. He just hit so hard since we have him modded for offense. And thanks to that leadership Zeta, he's dealing bonus turns when he's attacking out of turn. He's going to, he hits hard. So we're going to call him to assist um, and do a little bit of damage here on this um, stasis field. Now that it has the lowest amount of health. If we happen to knock him underneath 50% health, he's going to take that stasis field. Okay. Now we're going to start working on these side droids so that we can keep the Dark Rage under control. And keep on working these guys down. Again, we're calling Revan to assist. Um, the damage of Revan is comparable to Zalbar and Mission. Um, so play around with it. Depending on how your mods are exactly, you guys, you might benefit most from having Zalbar attack more. Um, right now, my mission is doing about 13,000 damage, right? Um, and my Zalbar and his basic is doing about eight. So that attack right there in total is worth about 24,000 damage. Um, and Revan, when he's getting called to assist, um, he's hitting upwards of, you know, like right there is 18,000. But if I call him to assist, he's doing 21,000. So you see what I mean? The, the damage is like close to comparable. So play around with whoever is dealing more damage. That's who you're gonna use to attack, okay? Now, when it comes to Zalbar's turn and you got Power Blast ready, make sure to attack Malik. Get that AoE out. We got the armor shred on him. Um, so now he has that negative defense. We're gonna start working down this stasis droid or this stasis field over here to get rid of the um, crit damage one. And we're gonna be calling Revan to assist. See 28,000, like that's more than what Zalbar's doing anyways. So just bear that in mind. Now, one thing you guys don't use, there's no reason to use um, really any attacks on Malik apart from Zalbar's um, Power Blast. That's pretty much the only one that you're going to be using to attack um, Malik with. Otherwise, you're avoiding pretty much as much as possible attacking Malik. Um, so, like right now, unfortunately, he's taunting. Looks like it's about to shrug off. It does. So, as much as possible, again, you don't need to attack him. You don't need to attack him um, apart from um, Zalbar um, to inflict those armor shreds. That's the main person who's going to be dealing damage to Zalbar or to, to Malik for the initial the initial bit. Um, that's to stave off um, him getting below that 50% health and taking one of these um, stasis fields. So we're going to do a little bit more damage um, to this Dark Infusion one um to make sure that he's gonna drain that one and then we're gonna get working on another one all right now again the next worst one for him to take is this crit damage one so i'm gonna start working on that one but his stacks of infused or dark rage i want to keep that under like 15 for me to feel safe um i never like seeing it in double digits so i'm gonna work on some droids here for, for just a little bit we're gonna farm some of these droids um, knock those guys out. Okay, we got rid of that. Keep him down at nine. Let's get rid of this one. All right, armor shred is back up and ready, so we're gonna do another one of those. We got a second one, beautiful. Calling Revan to assist. Again, see like Revan right there just did 30,000, you know? That's, that's a big hit. You know, that's a big hit comparatively speaking. Again, you know, um, Mission and Zalbar are doing just over 20,000 damage. So, uh, you know, play around with what offense you're able to actually get. 
All right, let's go for this crit damage one. Let's go ahead and get this out of there. And we really don't want him to get that one. So he's at 10 stacks. Go ahead and call Revan over here. Kill another droid. All right, so this ability here, Torture, uh, inflicts shock, uh, dispels all, all buffs, and then inflicts shock. And then Malik's unique is he taunts whenever somebody, um, wait, not that ability, this ability here. Malik taunts whenever a character is inflicted with shock or fear, or whenever he gets critically hit, <laughs> or um, gets uh, hit with a dot. So he's about to use this ability, which is probably going to force him to taunt anyway, since he's going to hit someone with shock. So I'm going to kill this stasis field because that forces him to taunt anyways. And he's going to use that ability and he's going to taunt again. And then I'll use Basilet to dispel it anyways. So it's kind of this, you play around with knowing what's going to happen anyways, if that makes sense. All right, let's work on this droid. Get those stacks down. All right, so Malik's getting Malik's getting close to 50% health. Let's go ahead and dispel that. There we go. All right, so we got that dark infusion one. All right. So we got dark infusion, so we're going to start working on this tenacity one. We don't want him to get that one. All right. Beautiful. Okay. Before, um, our goal here is to get Malak as close to 50% health as possible by the time we kill this droid or this stasis field. Okay. And so what I mean by that is we're going to whittle his health down just a little bit. If we can't get a buff immunity. Yes, we can. Because we don't want him, we don't want him to take that. Um, we don't want him to take this this stasis field. But as soon as he, t as we, as as soon as we take the stasis field, he's gonna taunt. Actually, we, since we have buff immunity right now, we got buff immunity. So actually, what we're gonna do is kill it real quick, and then we don't have to deal with him taunting. Beautiful. Okay. Now we're gonna get him as close to fifty percent health as possible, and then we're gonna call Revan to assist. Oh, it's going to be tight. Okay. So the issue when it comes to light side is you don't have like a ton of DPS. And so what ends up happening is as soon as I get Malak underneath 50% health, he's going to gain a bonus turn and use Dark Infusion. Or sorry, um, he's going to use Drain Life here and unfortunately probably get back over 50 health so my goal is to get him as close to 50 percent health as possible and then throw the kitchen sink at him um so he doesn't when he goes underneath 50 percent health he doesn't just go right back over 50 percent health does that make sense um we're trying to keep him from getting over or going under and then back over 50 percent health and unfortunately he did which is like that's the worst that's the freaking worst. Because now you get stuck in this loop. See if this gets him. Mark him. All right, good, 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 good. Get another armor shred. Perfect. So now that we got him like far enough underneath 50% health, even when he drains somebody, he's not going to get close enough to uh, back over 50% health, and then we can just throw the rest of the kitchen sink at him, and he should be dead right here, hopefully. Just need another good hit on him. Oh, he got Zalbar. He got Zalbar, so he's getting a lot of health. Let's call Revan to assist. Get some big damage. He's about to go in rage. Let's call Revan to assist again, and we got him. All right. That was a little hectic there at the end. But you can kind of see, basically in theory, what you're trying to do, you guys, is get him as close to 50 health as you can. 
use Revan either his direct focus to call a bunch of people to to assist because as soon as he goes underneath 50% health, he's going to use drain life and then he's going to get close to getting over 100 or 50% health, which then resets the cooldown the next time you get him under 50% health. You get stuck in that little loop right there, which really causes you some issues. So try and get him as close to 50% health as you can with little baby hits, you know, maybe an AoE or Joe Lee's attack or, you know, something. Um to hopefully get him as close to 50% health and then use Revan's direct focus or Basila's call assist attack or Revan's um, call assist attack um, to call Basila so that when you get him underneath 50% health, he doesn't get um, back over 50% health. As you can see, it is still possible. Um, even if he does, you just got to play it. You just got to play that 50% health um, moment very safely. All right. Um, so that's light side out of the way, guys. Let's jump on over to the dark side. Now, dark side. Dark side is way easier, and honestly, there's not a whole lot that goes into it. Um, <laughs> the light side one, you're trying to do these very specific strategies of like killing this stasis field first and trying to get him like close to 50% health to throw the kitchen sink at him, blah, blah, you know, so on and so forth. Dark side one's a lot easier because of the sheer damage output that you get from Revan. So, gear, mods, Zetas for the dark side. Now, Darth Revan, um, for his Zetas, you guys, you actually, there's not a lot of them that you need. Kind of a similar thing on the light side. Um, you don't need the Lord of the Sith leader. Sith uh, Empire allies are immune to turn meter reduction while they're debuffed. There's really no turn meter reduction in this event, so you don't need to worry about that one. Um, villain is a beneficial one, like if you have to pick one. When his health falls below 50%, it's equalized with the other healthiest ally. The thing is, normally, that's not going to happen too often unless Malak is, like, straight up just hitting him. Normally, it's either going to be, like, he dies or he doesn't from a drain life. So, if any, this one is okay to have, but it's not, like, crazy important to have. Um, and then the other one, Conqueror here. Enemies can't assist or uh, attack again if they are uh, if they are attack targeting Darth Revan. Don't need that one whatsoever. There's no multi-attacks here. So, really, the only one that you're kind of looking at maybe is Villain, but you don't even absolutely need that one. Um, Darth Basti uh, for um, Sith Apprentice is not the most important one either. 50% potency, and then the character in the leader slot gain uh, foresight for one turn on the start of the battle. Not that important. You don't really need that much potency anyways, so I wouldn't say that one is essential for this event. Um, Karth, that's on his leadership. You obviously don't need him. Um, I do not have them on HK, um, and I don't think that they're necessary for this at all. Um, you can't inflict Malak with Deathmark or Fear anyway, so that's out the window. And then loyalty to the Maker. Um, if HK's uh, leader is Darth Revan, enemies with protection up can't gain bonus turn meter. He never, Malak never gains bonus turn meter, so both are, are irrelevant for him. Um, and then Candorus as well. Uh, he gains crit damage up for two turns when enemy gains taunt or becomes Deathmarked or Mark. Um, crit damage up is not that important for him, so don't worry about it. Um, so kind of light on the Zetas. Um, mods. Um, now there's no way around it. My Darth Revan is relic. I do not, you don't need him relic for this event. When I originally did it, I believe he was gear 12 plus something, but now he's relic. Um, speed, crit chance, um, have him hit hard. So mine's at 302 speed relic three. Um, crit damage and offense mods with the speed arrow. Give him a speed and crit chance set. Darth Revan pretty much owns this event. He is just going to absolutely work over Malak. Um, Darth Bassey, speed and potency. Um, get her to go quick, 288 speed. Um, she doesn't necessarily need much offense or anything in particular. Again, you're not hitting the ability blocks. You're not hitting the fears. She doesn't really need that potency. Um, this is honestly just kind of the mods that I've left on her. Um, but fear will inflict some of these other debuffs that are beneficial for you to have. But... Nothing too crazy. Karth, ah, whatever mods on him. I have my modded for potency, so I kind of just left it on there. HK, um, offense and crit chance, but again, kind of just whatever mods you got. It doesn't need anything special. My speed is terrible. Um, the mods themselves are pretty awful. Um, and then Candor's, same thing. Um, offense and potency, kind of cuz. Um, but he doesn't need a whole lot. Just get him over the power threshold so you can use him. Um, this event, as you guys are going to see, is is pretty much just Jarth Revan. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, 
So in the actual event here, you guys, um, strategy is, is um, similar with the stasis fields. Dark Infusion, that's the, the least important one for him to take. So you leave that at kind of a lower health, so he takes that one. Critical Hit Immunity and the Speed Up ones are the worst one for him to take. And then Tenacity is kind of on the, eh, it's not the worst thing if he gets it or not. Now one thing you need to bear in mind here is Vengeful Challenger. When a member of Darth Revan's squad defeats an enemy, Darth Revan gains three stacks of Frosty until the end of the encounter, which can't be this spell. This ability uh, is not available outside of the event. That's just for this event. And Frosty, if you guys didn't know, is minus 15% defense and tenacity per stack, but plus 8% offense and potency per stack. So basically what you're doing is you're just killing enough stasis field, enough droids until Darth Revan has so much freaking offense, he just flat out kills Malak. That's pretty much what this comes down to. Um, so we're gonna do, we're gonna be a little bit more reckless uh, when it comes to this event because it's just so, honestly, so easy. So keep working down these side droids. There goes one. another um now the other thing is is um revan inflicts buff immunity pretty much always on malik so you almost never have to worry about malik even taunting um because he's just gonna have he's, he's gonna have that uh buff immunity on him so often uh you almost never need to worry about him There's another one down. There's another one. There's another one. All right, now I'm gonna start working on this critical hit immunity one over here and kill that. That one's gone. So now he's for sure not going to get that critical hit immunity one, which is the most obnoxious one. Keep that buff immunity. Now we're up to 24 stacks. You can see how hard he's starting to hit now. <laughs> I'm going to go for this a nasty one so I can make sure I'm still getting the uh, buff immunity on him. So I think, kind of imagine you guys can see how much easier this one is. You have this constant buff immunity and then Revan just turns into this monster. I mean, we're at 36 stacks right now, and he's hitting for like 80k. Look at that, 65k on the basic. Seventy one k on the basic, and we got just tons of buff immunity. One shot in these characters. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this last stasis field. And then tell you what, we're gonna do a big AOE. And I was hoping he's gonna follow up with last rate, but he didn't. That's okay. 120k. And he's down. So get to like your, you know, 20, 30 stacks. Um, and really you don't have to worry about anything else. So guys, I hope that event uh, guide helped you out. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys think. Is there any other little tips and tricks that you guys have used in your unlocks or anyone who has unlocked this or as going through any little tips or tricks that you guys has, have found useful so that we can, as a community, all benefit from that. Let me know what you guys think down below. And otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, I will catch you guys in the next one. And until then, we're going off the grid.